Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Cincinnati, Ohio, meaning I have successfully left Columbus, Ohio, without incident, without any vehicular problems. Uh, for, unfortunately, my car is still there. My car is still being repaired. Uh, they say May uh, May third. It's supposed to be ready, but I shouldn't count my my, my <laughs> shouldn't count my uh, chickens before they hatch. Though I'm still in Ohio, so cross your fingers for me. Hopefully, I can make it out of Ohio without any uh, vehicle incidents. But uh, today we're in Cincinnati, and uh, more specifically than that, I'm in front of Union Terminal. And if this looks familiar, there may be a reason for that, even if you've not been to Cincinnati, is that this building was used as the inspiration for uh, the Hall of Justice, home of the Super Friends, home of the Justice League, the team of superheroes featuring Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash. Am I missing anyone? Who else is who else is in, who else is in the Justice League Super Friends? If you if you know who I'm leaving out, leave a comment in the comments section. And what is the difference, by the way? What is the difference between the Super Friends and the Justice League? Is that just, is it the same organization? They just changed names. I think the Super Friends was a cartoon in the 1970s, so maybe it was just a friendlier name. The Justice League has such a such a more, more striking name uh, name to it, but. They, they took the inspiration in this building, Union Terminal, which is a uh, train station in Cincinnati. They used this building as inspiration, originally appearing in the Super Friends 1970s cartoon. But they've used it since in DC Comics. In other iterations, you will see the Hall of Justice, including the uh, Battle for Metropolis ride at, uh, at uh, Six Flags Parks. It's, I think, it's, it's Justice League Battle for Metropolis. It's a, uh, like a, a hybrid shooting game, dark ride that exists at multiple Six Flags parks. The exterior of the ride is actually, uses this design as well. So that's actually probably where I know it, uh, I know it the best from. But what is in there now? Is, are we gonna walk in there? Is there gonna be Superman hanging out? Is Batman gonna be uh, sitting down with his feet up? because there's not really superheroes in there. What is in there is apparently a bunch of museums. It is not just a museum, but apparently there are multiple museums within Union Terminal slash the Hall of Justice. So uh, let's head inside the hall, please follow me. Here's a little bit more history that I just stumbled upon. This is actually the site of home field of the first pro baseball team, the uh, 1869 Cincinnati Red Stockings. Although I, I do have to wonder if they were the first pro baseball team, who'd they play against? If they were the first, they had to wait around <laughs> until the second was uh, founded before they could actually have a game. So apparently I think the field is gone. But uh, we do still have the Union Terminal here. They have this really cool waterfall fountain in front. Currently not running water, but still pretty amazing. If the building itself, you can see why they use this as inspiration, because it's just a magnificent building. And it is time to head inside. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's actually incredibly beautiful in here. You have these murals of all these different people, different types of people. You see steel workers over there, Native Americans on the other side. Just through, yeah, the mural continues over here. Oh, that's, that's amazing. 
And look at this, uh, this is a ticket booth for the museum. It has like an old, uh, has times on it, I guess, that would tell the times of the trains leaving through here. And you can definitely see the shape of the building like it was outside. Look at that. Looks like this back area is where you'd actually board the trains. And I wasn't sure about this, but yeah, this is actually an active train station here. And it's uh, currently roped off. But I guess back here is where you would go to board the train. And it looks like they actually have an Omnimax theater back there as well. You can see some very important looking Cincinnati businessmen sitting in front of the building here. And there's one price for a ticket to all the museums. You see the different museums and different sections of the building. Over here where it says incoming taxis and motor coaches, or I guess where cars and taxis will be arriving, you have the Museum of Natural History and Science. And here are the outgoing taxis and motor coaches. I guess where the uh, where taxis would leave, where cars would leave from. We have the Cincinnati History Museum. Now the one exhibit that wasn't included in the one price ticket was the Brictionary, a Lego exhibit here on the lower level. And I guess we will uh, we'll check this one out first. I did add on the Brictionary ticket. Let's so head here down, uh, down the escalator. Also down here in the lower level, they have the Children's Museum. And uh, here is like a, this is, it says the woods. So it's like a uh, area where kids can climb and act like they're in the woods. But what I do love is that they incorporate real taxidermy. See the owl hanging there. A couple of, couple of deer up there on the ridge. All right, here we have the Lego exhibit, the Brictionary. I actually have things in alphabetical order. So A is for Antonov. Not maybe, not maybe what I was expecting. It says the Antonov was the world's largest and heaviest airplane ever built. Okay, so this is a big plane. I guess you could actually put a train inside the plane. A train and a plane, what a time to be alive. And look inside the Antonov here. Yeah, there's uh, room for two train cars in there. But it isn't just for Antonov, it is also for alligator. Check out uh, this alligator here. Oh, look at those teeth. And B is for building. And technically, the Space Needle is a building, the Seattle Space Needle. And C is for costume. You can see this dress made out of Legos. It says it's actually made out of Lego helicopter blades. And here we have a Lego DeLorean. I think this is one of those modified DeLoreans that can travel through time. It's got all the uh, the adjustments there to be able to uh, travel to other time periods. Down here we have a uh, Lego UFO crash. I don't know if that's supposed to be uh, the Roswell incident. And also over here we have a full Lego Godzilla causing mass destruction and uh, panic. There's uh, the Chinese theater in Hollywood. Let's see, you can actually look inside. Oh, look at this. They're watching the Lego movie. Oh, this is interesting. E is for earthquake here. And you're actually invited to try to build a structure that can withstand an earthquake. Well, you can see this moving platform here. You can move the Richter scale down. 
or turn it all the way up. All right, let's see if we can build a, an earthquake-proof Lego house. Entrance way here, and I know when you have an earthquake, you're supposed to stand in the entrance way of a house because it's the most stable part. So maybe we'll just make the entire the entire building here completely out of entrance ways. Well, I think that'll I think that'll hold. Always thinking here. Oh, we put a door on top of a door. Yeah, why don't they make why don't they make houses completely out of doorways? That way, um, well, let's see, you can use this to stabilize it. And that way, uh, you would never have to worry about earthquakes. All right. All right, so I've constructed the home completely out of doorways. This should be the strongest home ever made. Let's give it a little bit on the Richter scale. Oh yeah, doing good. Uh, let's just, yeah, let's just crank it. Oh, look at that. It can withstand the world's strongest earthquake. I should, uh, I should, uh, I should probably be an engineer. G is for garden. You can see uh, people have made their own flowers to add to this garden here. H is for Harley Davidson. They're making a mosaic here. You should go to these tablets and it'll give you an assignment. You put together what it's telling you to and then they will add it to the mosaic here. L, of course, is for Las Vegas. We have that iconic, fabulous Las Vegas sign. Apparently N is for nunchucks. O is for ocean. See the ship going on a real rough ride there. O is for orca. See the orca leaping out of the floor there. P is for platypus, and a plat platypus is one of the most interesting uh, species of animals. They're, 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 they're like the one animal that just falls out of any possible classification. Fun fact, the male platypus has a poison spike in his foot, and uh, the female does not. They're just, they're just layers and layers of mysteries with the platypus. Here's the Lego movie. We have a photo op. We can take our photos with Emmett and Lucy. Oh, and this is really cool. Here at the end we have the very building we are in, the Union Terminal made of Lego bricks. Have some Lego merch here in the gift shop, but uh, what I find most interesting is is uh, this plushie here. It's a little Lego man who is a he's a he's a corn cob for some reason. Also has a mustache. Next up, we'll take a peek inside the children's museum over here. Pretty awesome Ankylosaurus invites us into the children's museum. A little bit of taxidermy here to help educate the kids. Oh, look at that. Uh, is that a little lemur down there? This display talks about diet. So the uh, case is actually shaped like a big mouth. And there we see the possum. I don't know, he likes eating, uh, he likes eating uh, bugs and garbage and cat food. And then look who we have down here. Is that, is that a... Uh, is that a Wolverine? In this case on body coverings shaped like a coat. You see animals with interesting body coverings like the scaly pangolin, the pointy porcupine, and uh, the bear there, who, yeah, bear pretty much just has fur though. 
You have nature's trading post. So I guess you can go over here and you can uh, trade for different scientific objects. In case a kid wants to take home a trilobite or a, uh, or a stuffed owl. Oh, look at this. This monstrous set of giant teeth here. I guess you gotta try to take care of these teeth here. A little toothbrush there. We can la da 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 Oh, 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 there, getting those hard to hard to reach places. You can see the inside of the teeth as we cross through here. Oh, look at all that pulp in the middle, man. Have him have him one of these yanked out. I had four of these yanked out uh, a little over a year ago. Man, that was the worst day of my life. Now it's time to enter the woods. We got a little peek of this. From the floor above us, you can see a little raccoon, a little taxidermy raccoon looking down on us. We got some real live fish in here. Well, hello there. Hello there, Mr. Turtle. How are you doing? Okay, there are stairs inside the cave. So we'll head in here in the cave. Oh my gosh, look at these spooky light up spiders here. All right, here are the cave stairs. All right, we're here up above the woods and <laughs> look what we have over here a little fox chaos reads you can see here we have a tree house here see it's all constructed with various pieces of wood cake pans even has a uh, construction helmet helmet there fastened into the wall the ingenuity used to uh, create a tree house. All right, so we're gonna head back upstairs to check out uh, the other museums that are on the uh, first floor. So let's educate ourselves on the history of the great city of Cincinnati. As we enter the Cincinnati History Museum, you see this display of different modes of transportation. We have this competitive wheelchair. This would be used to play uh, wheelchair basketball. I guess using this wheel here, we can rotate this wheelchair. And over here we have Cincinnati itself. This is downtown Cincinnati in the 1940s. See the trains there running through town. See the streetcar there going up the hill. I'm not entirely sure. Does Cincinnati still have streetcars? I honestly do not remember. Yeah, I really do enjoy this display here. Very detailed. And uh, while showing you the city, kind of gives you a look back in time as well. But where do all the trains in Cincinnati end up going to? Why? The Union Terminal. Right here where we are, where the building where we currently sit. We're, we're inside there right now. See the baseball stadium here. Of course, we learned earlier that uh, Cincinnati had the first ever professional baseball team. See the trolley there going in front of the cemetery. Here are the zoological gardens from the 1900s. It says this was the second oldest zoo in America. Makes me wonder what was the first oldest zoo, if you know what was the first zoo in America? Leave a comment in the comment section. 
And here is a gibbon that will be found in the zoo. It says that we can give him a pet to hear his, hear his noise. Here's that night has fallen on the uh, city of Cincinnati. All the little lights glowing. And here we can see one of the actual streetcars, much like the ones we saw in the diorama. Looks like we can actually take a walk through the old trolley here. Oh yeah. We can look out the window, see a lone man walking quietly by himself on the streets of Cincinnati. Watch that last step, it's a doozy. Now we have a transportation section within the Cincinnati History Museum. You can see uh, Frisch's big boy up there. I love Frisch's, he has a different look from the other traditional big boys. And I guess this is the history of uh, transportation, of the uh, bicycle, as well as those electric scooters that they just drop off in major cities. Here is Coney Island, not Coney Island, New York, but Coney Island, Ohio, which is uh, near to where we are right now. This is how it looked in the 1940s, but apparently it is still, um, still in business today. I've actually never been there. You can see the midway here. Looks like there's a carousel rotating down at the end. Oh, and there's the tumble bug. <laughs> One thing I have learned here is people from Cincinnati definitely love their sports. You can see some of the bobbleheads there, the Cincinnati Reds. I do, I do genuinely like that their mascot is a uh, just a man with a giant baseball for a head and with a, with a big mustache. An exhibit on the beautiful parks of Cincinnati. Apparently it's traditional to go on picnics in the beautiful Cincinnati parks. You can see the picnic equipment there, a picnic basket, a frisbee, a thermos, and some sort of weird old-timey radio. And there's definitely something I do love about Cincinnati. He's talking about some of the food here. You have Khan's American Beauty Ham. But uh, when I think of Cincinnati, I think of one place. That is Skyline Chili. And this is the original door from the original Skyline Chili restaurant. Here's a, a time clock. I guess it's, I guess we need to, so we need to punch in here. Let's see. Oh, I'm a copywriter. Here's the make a mural section. You can put yourself in, the, in, a, in a mural and envision it in the Cincinnati landscape. Tap the camera icon to begin a five second countdown. All right, we got our picture. Let's create a mural. Uh, drag and drop objects onto the canvas. Okay, so we've got uh, different Cincinnati themed items here. Oh, look who they have here. It's Shark Girl. The, the, she was actually rejected by Cincinnati. It was a piece of artwork given to the city. They didn't want her, so she ended up finding her permanent home in Buffalo. Definitely gonna add Shark Girl there. Shark Girl can sit on my shoulder there. Proud to have Shark Girl involved here. And we gotta go with a plate of Skyline Chili there here. Of that, holding that in my arm. And I guess I'll have to wear this big mustache so I can be like the uh, mascot of uh, the uh, Cincinnati uh, Reds. Oh, that's a really, that is a really big 
mustache. Oh, there we go. We can shrink down the mustache. And there we go. Mr. Red's mustache. <laughs> Shark girl and some, uh, and some, uh, skyline chili. All right. And there we go. It's displayed my mural here. Me with my Mr. Red mustache, my plate of skyline chili, and then Shark girl. Although, I, I don't think Cincinnati should be able to claim uh, Shark Girl anymore because she's definitely a Buffalo, New York icon now. We have a steamship exhibit in here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is cool. There's like a whole life size steamship here in the museum. Guess we will head on inside of the steamer here see what it was like to be in a uh, Cincinnati steamer. Some uh, boxes there and uh, some barrels over here. And as we leave the steamer, we can see some old time Cincinnati streets here. Down here we have the fifth street market a sausage cart right here some delicious looking sausages and I don't know why that ham is swinging like a pendulum so we'll head over here into the furniture manufacturer In here, they do talk about the furniture industry in Cincinnati, but also talk about some of the other things that were uh, made in Cincinnati. It says the Frank Tea and Spice Company was started in 1896 in uh, Cincinnati, and they're the ones that would eventually produce Frank's Red Hot Hot Sauce, which is one of the better hot sauces on the market. The invention of Kutal Wall Cleaner was invented in Cincinnati. This was a putty that you would press against the wall to help get all the dirt and grime off. Apparently uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't very popular, but then they found another use for it. They would take the putty used to clean walls, give it to kids, and kids would have a blast with it. It became Play-Doh. The Kenner Toy Company started in Cincinnati where they would uh, create these, those iconic Kenner Star Wars toys and uh, many other toys after that. Does everyone want to see how the sausage is made? Just gotta turn the crank there and look at that. So we have seen the Children's Museum We've seen the Lego Museum. We have seen the Cincinnati History Museum. It is now time to head into the Museum of Natural History and Science. We start off with some good old dinosaur bones. Here's the head of the Gallimopus here. So we can look at its skeleton. Some vicious, monstrous, flesh-eating theropods here. But these are not T-Rexes, no, no, no. These are Allosauruses. And you know what they say about the Allosauruses? You can be my bodyguard, and I can be your long-lost pal. Do, 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 do. I can call you Betty, and Betty, you can call me Allosaurus. Take a peek into the paleontologist lab. You can see they're hard at work on this triceratops. Here is a very rare taxidermy specimen here. This is a Sumatran rhinoceros, which are incredibly endangered. It says only 80 of them live uh, in the wild. So it was a very rare animal preserved here, but this particular Sumatran rhino. His name is Ipu, and he lived at the uh, Cincinnati Zoo, 
and he was uh, very, very significant because him and his partner were the uh, the first Sumatran rhinos in captivity to reproduce. Uh, so he had uh, he sired three children, which you know have gone on to help at least in some capacity to uh, repopulate Sumatran rhinos. Of course, obviously, if there's only 80 in the wild, there's still a long way to go. But uh, you know what? That'll do, Rhino. That'll do. Got a cute little bobcat there. Oh, this is their DNA lab here. And their paleontology lab, just around the corner, was uncovering a triceratops. Maybe this is uh, unwarranted of me to speculate about, but could it be possible that they are uh, recreating the triceratops using DNA here? at the Cincinnati Museum of Natural History. I have uh, no other evidence than what I've presented you, but I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll hear about a uh, brand new Triceratops coming out of this museum very soon. Also, there's a case full of, uh, full of dead varmints in here. Some other varmints in here. There's the American beaver. Which is, my, uh, which is my mother's arch nemesis. She has been doing uh, battle with the uh, beavers around her uh, pond. <laughs> All right, here we have arrived at the cave. And I hear some running water back here. And uh, look at this, okay, there's a waterfall and a staircase taking us down into what looks like an actual cave. Also, I spot a little raccoon there enjoying the waterfall. But yeah, let's uh, head down. This is kind of unexpected. It smells like a real cave. See an Allegheny wood rat down here in the cave with us. Oh, wait. That's not a taxidermy bat there. That's a, that's a real live bat. It looks like it's getting pretty, pretty narrow in here. Oh my, oh my goodness. This reminds me of Fat Man Squeeze of Rock City. Oh, there we go. Look, got nervous there for a second. Yeah, I wasn't aware that I was going to be doing some genuine spelunking today. Water trickling down the side of the cave. I guess we'll walk over this. Slippery rock here. Let's head in here. Oh wow. These cave formations. You have some stalactites up there. Some stalagmites down at the bottom. Now uh, the way I, I was taught to tell the difference, stalactites have to hang on tight to hang from the ceiling. And stalagmites, they don't have to hang on tight. Looks like we've made our way back up to the surface. And now it is time to head into the Ice Age. Now the Ice Age sections have been some of my favorite parts of a lot of the uh, natural history museums that I have visited. I guess we're entering here into a glacier. Oh, look at that over there. Some sort of some sort of ice ox over there. As so we head into the glacier. So here we have the mighty mastodon. And they put these little 3D models here where we can see not only the outside of the mastodon, but we can see the skeleton on the inside. Oh, well, look at that. You got some uh, mammoth hair. You know, they should maybe think about taking that up uh, to the DNA lab and uh, seeing what they could uh, cook up. These are generalist species. So these, these are animals 
that were alive during the Ice Age that are still alive today. So back then, they had groundhogs, so they were able to know how, how long the winter was gonna last. I guess back then, the winter just lasted forever, so they really didn't need to worry about the groundhog seeing its shadow. Also got some skunks, a muskrat, and yeah, they even, they even had ducks back in the Ice Age. All right, back into the glacier. Does anyone remember Glacier from WCW? All right, we're getting ready to exit the glacier here and enter the Ice Age. Talks about here how the glacier scraped its way across the landscape. And uh, you can demonstrate here by scratching the rock against this smooth rock here. Let's see if we can... Uh, Oh yeah. oh yeah, that's scratching a nice groove there. I must say the use of running water in the Natural History Museum is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. It really adds to the effect. You can see the uh, Arctic wolf there. Yeah, they have a really realistic Ice Age landscape here. Here's something my mom hopes she never has to deal with in her pond. These giant prehistoric beavers. See some of these hoofed animals there, the child nursing on its mother. And yeah, here are uh, some of the animals they said were, were already around back then. Got the muskrat. Oh, there's, there's another beaver. This one's uh, making a dam. Big prehistoric moose in the trees there. And wipe that smile off your face. So we got a Smilodon up here, also known as the saber toothed tiger or saber toothed cat. And uh, look at that, it has some little babies there. And they just have little tiny peeny saber teeth. Here are some flat headed peccaries, the ancestors of pigs. You can see even back then, pigs like to roll around in the mud. They had buffaloes back then too. I guess they just had bigger humps. And probably my favorite prehistoric animal, the giant ground sloth here. See, he's very slowly munching on that tree. I guess a lot of uh, remnants can be found at Big Bone Lick, Kentucky, which is a state park. And uh, I admit, as a, as a younger person, I used to drive by the uh, Big Bone Lick State Park. I'd see the sign on the highway, and I would, uh, I'd give out just a tiny little chuckle. This mural here shows the extinct animals marching this way towards extinction. The giant beaver there. So that's kind of, that's kind of sad. But if we look down, we see the modern animals marching this way towards existence. Oh, sorry, Cave Bear. You had a good run. Uh, we'll miss you. We'll miss you, Mastodon. Oh, and there's a polar bear to remind us that living species can be equally as terrifying. Now it is time to go to space. This is the Neil Armstrong Space Exploration Gallery. Of course, Neil Armstrong, a Ohio boy, and here we have the headset that he wore on uh, Apollo 11. You can see the full space suit there. Those big space boots leaving space prints in the moon that is in space. If we follow in the steps of Neil Armstrong over here, we find ourselves in front of a chunk of the actual moon. Look at that. Tiny little moon chunk. That says over here that objects, large objects, bend the shape of space and time. I don't know if that's... Oh no, I'm causing ripples 
ripples in time with my, uh, oh no. This reminds me of that one um, Simpsons Halloween episode where Homer gets sucked into another dimension. See some meteorites here that have uh, struck the earth. And here we have a meteor machine where we can uh, fire a meteor onto the, the, the surface here. So we gotta uh, create pressure by turning this crank. We wanna get that pressure nice and high. We want the biggest impact. We want dinosaur killing levels of impact here. Let me get this, get this cranked up. Uh, we'll go all the way up to all the way up to 30 there. All right. And then uh, hit this button to aim. All right, we can line up as to where we want our impact to be. Let's do it right there in the middle. And then I'll get ready to fire here. And let's see if we can blow a chunk in this planet. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, the, you see how the creator, the, the crater is right there that we blew into the crust. Oh, there we go, blew another one. We can uh, blow a bunch of, we have a meteor shower here. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, we're running out of pressure. Here we have an exhibit on how bugs make their songs. The beautiful noises that the bugs serenade us with. We have a cicada here. And let's see if it moves its wings back and forth and makes that wonderful soothing noise. And the Katie did here is it moves its wings, makes that lovely, lovely Katie did noise. Hey there, Mr. Bear. We got a little fox there doing his little, doing his little fox jump. Oh yeah, we got a little, little bunny up here as well. And over here we have the ever faithful Mr. Possum. We got another possum over here by the coyote. And look at this little one. He's a uh, it's kind of an unusual looking possum. It's almost uh, almost all white, little darkness there on his legs and hindquarters, but uh, I usually don't see him that white. This big uh, smoldering cauldron here, I guess supposed to push down on this. Oh, look at that. Look up here, we can see a tornado forming. I guess we can actually walk through the tornado, which is normally, normally not a good idea, but uh, let's give it a whirl here. Gonna step up here. See the tornado there? I think it's just like dissipated. Just the, the, my, my, me walking through it just ruined, ruined the tornado, which is good. Cause I hate tornadoes. Oh, watch out. Coming back behind me. Actually, do have a beautiful view of the city of Cincinnati here from the porch of the Union Terminal.
thank you for joining me here today at Union Terminal, the inspiration for the Justice League's Hall of Justice and a magnificent, beautiful building in its own right. Although I do really feel like they missed the mark. They should have had something, something to do with superheroes in there. It seems like a natural tie-in, kind of bring things full circle. But yeah, instead of being packed with superheroes, it is packed with museums. We had the Children's Museum, the History Museum, the Natural History Museum, and the Lego exhibit. So four museums all packed within one magnificent building. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming along. If you like these videos, I travel around the country, film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, subscribe to let you know when uh, new videos are out. Uh, also, if you want to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Hoping to get some new ones in there soon. And uh, still doing cameos, personalized messages, birthdays, anniversaries, just for fun. Uh, if you'd like a personalized message from me or to send one to a friend or loved one, all that information is in the description. And all that helps keep this train at the terminal, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.